So let's take a look at some examples of problems where you have to use logarithm properties to simplify derivatives. So what I want to do here is I actually want to take the derivative of each one of these problems. And so before like we start, so just, just kind of appreciate, I guess, these problems, they all have like log base, whatever in them. And then when you look at these problems themselves, they're they're kind of a mess, right? Like, so you could use the chain rule in these, but just thinking about this and then how that would fit in with the derivative of just the general like log base A, so I have that listed here, it would just kind of be a lot to do, like, because with this one, you're gonna have like the chain rule and then you're gonna have to do the quotient rule and it's just gonna be a lot, same thing here. So an option that we have is to take these problems and to basically use properties of logarithms. So if you don't have these memorized, this is something that you need to know for a calculus class. So I will show you kind of all the relevant properties. Pause the video and like rewind and or whatever and, and write these down and have these someplace where you can easily access them because they pop up from time to time in other classes. And so sometimes you have to give yourself a refresher, but it is something that you're expected to know in a class. Okay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at these three problems. So starting with problem A here. So like I said, the the key for me that I probably wanna use properties of logarithms is that this would just be a mess to do the chain rule with. I could do it, but maybe I could make my life a little bit easier. So thinking about the properties of logarithms, so notice that I can use both the quotient rule and the power rule here. So basically that's what I want to do. And you might want to try to, to simplify this on your own. Like this would be a really good place to check your understanding. So pause here, try to simplify and then hit play. So I am literally not taking the derivative yet. I am just trying to kind of simplify. So first things first, I'm going to bring down that exponent like this. So now I've got the natural log of two times the natural, blah, 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 blah. natural log of two times log base two of three X plus one over x minus 1. Okay, and so now I can use the quotient rule here. All right, so now you just have to be careful when you do this. Here's one place where I see a mistake a lot. This natural log of 2, this is a number, right? So this is a constant that really needs to apply to this entire expression. So just make sure that when you do this, so I might have the natural log of 2, I'm going to set up this set of parentheses so I don't forget to distribute this natural log of 2. So I've got now log base 2 of 3x plus 1 minus log base 2 of x minus 1. And so notice I still have to apply this natural log to the entire expression because that's what this was meant for. It's natural log for the entire expression. So now just to be nice and thorough, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and distribute this. And now, let's see, now I can finally take the derivative. Okay, so I've simplified this as far as I can. I think that this is going to be much easier to take the derivative of than the first, like the, the first way that this was written. So let me clear some space. And now we can get this, this party started. Now just remember the derivative for just log base a of x. So here's kind of the structure of it. So we just want to keep this in mind. So if I start taking my derivative, so my natural log of two is just a constant. So I'm just going to write that down. And then it's going to be that times one over. So this is going to be, notice that instead of having now just a plain X here, I have three X plus one. So I need to write down three X plus one times the natural log of two. Now, since this was three X plus one, instead of just X, I have to use the chain rule here. So now I have to take the derivative of this function. So it's this now times three. So there's the first part. So we're just gonna leave that as is and now pivot to the next part of this. So I'll write down the natural log of two again. This times, so for now I'm gonna start working on using the chain rule here. So this will be one over x minus one times the natural log of two. All of that times the derivative of x minus one. So that'll just be times one. Okay, so now I can go ahead and simplify all of this and so now you just kind of have to stay on your toes. So I've got the natural log of two over three X plus one times the natural log of two. Oops, and I forgot the three, it should be three natural log of two times all of this, okay. And then minus the natural log of two over 
x minus 1 times the natural log of 2. And so now you can see here these natural logs of 2 actually canceled out. So let's see if I can fit this here. This will be 3 over 3x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1, and we're good. Okay, so now moving on to this one, it's it's the same idea where we want to kind of simplify. So again, like if you are really rusty with your log properties, I highly recommend that you actually pause the video here and force yourself to try this. Even if you get it wrong, that's okay, but you're not going to get any better at just watching this. You have to actually like get your hands dirty with the math and then kind of reflect on what you're getting and what you're not getting. Okay, so first things first. So notice that I have kind of this whole like crazy situation here, natural log of seven and the cube root of um, this whole thing. So I could really think of this instead of this, this cube root, I'm sorry, this should be log base seven. I can have this x plus one over four x minus six, all of that to the natural log of seven over three. So that's how you would write that as a rational exponent. And by the way, if you don't remember that, I have a, a review video where I actually do exponents for calculus students. So you can, you can look that up if you just need a brief review on exponents. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as before. I'm going to use the, the um, power rule to bring this down in front, and then I'll use the quotient rule for the rest of this. So I'm going to have the natural log of 7 over 3 times log base 7 of x plus 1 over 4x minus 6. And then I can rewrite this again. So I've got the natural log of seven over three times log base seven of x plus one minus log base seven of four x minus six. Now remember, this has to count towards this entire expression. So once again, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put these parentheses around so that I can now distribute this in. Okay, so I need a little more space here. So now I'll go ahead and distribute this natural log of 7 over 3 in. So here is kind of this whole mess, but it's okay. It's going to all simplify in a little bit, so we just have to be patient. Okay, so here you go. So now this is what I want to take the derivative of. So once again, um, I'll make some space. And so now let's go ahead and get this party started. So y prime times the natural log of 7 over 3. So this is going to be this times 1 over x plus 1 times the natural log of 7 minus the natural log of 7 over 3 times, oh, uh, and then by the way, the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so I didn't have to multiply this by 1 here. So I just, I, I omitted that part for space, sorry. And then this part, so this is the natural log of 7 over 3, this is going to be 1 over 4x minus 6 times the natural log of 7. And then this times the derivative of 4x minus 6, so that's going to be times 4. So like I said, I wrote the times 4 here. I've just omitted the times 1 since this was the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. So I'm, you, you can see I'm kind of running out of space. So, um, okay. So now let's go ahead and simplify this. So in, in looking across this whole craziness, so notice here these natural logs of 7, once again, I'm going to cancel out, so that's cool. Um, so then I'm going to have 1 over 3 times x plus 1 minus 4 over 3 times 4x minus 6. And so there we go. That's, that's the derivative all simplified. You could distribute this in if you wanted to. Um, I think it's just a matter of preference. Okay, so this last one I really like because it, you have to really think with it, okay? So in in looking at this, so you might be thinking, oh, okay, now I'm just going to like throw all these different properties at it. But there's something very interesting about this. You've got e and the natural log of 4. So one thing that I want to do is I, I want to kind of just think about this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually just going to bring this out and I'm going to leave the other part of this in. So sometimes you want to think before you really get going with this. So I've got tangent of 2x, so I'll put this in parentheses, times x times the natural log of 4, and then I've got e to the natural log of 4. 
Okay, so I want to go back to that list of properties. So this list of other properties. So this last one is actually very interesting. So let's think about this for a moment. I have this property a log base a of x equals x. Now you might have to take a second to really think about what does this mean in terms of natural logarithms. Because the thing is, so a natural logarithm, the natural logarithm of x is actually just log base e of x, right? That's what it means to be a natural logarithm. So if I think about that then in, in this context here, this is really e times log base e of 4. Do you see that? I literally took kind of this, this part here and I just translated it into this property. And so now I have like the conditions I need, right? I have these two things are the same. So this whole thing then is just going to equal what? It's just going to equal 4. So you have to think for a second before you do this one. So this, this actually can just be rewritten as 4. So let's clear some space. So I've got y equals the tangent of 2x and then x. And now this will just be log base 4 of 4. But wait, there's more. So now, if I go back to this list of properties, so log base a of a equals 1. Therefore, log base 4 of 4 just equals 1. So you have to sometimes play around with this a little bit and experiment. Because what this, this does then is this whole thing, this just equals 1. So what I really have here is just the tangent of 2x times x. So all that stuff with logarithms actually dropped out as a consequence of us using logarithmic properties. Kind of crazy, right? So now let me clear some space. And now I can just take the derivative. So this is going to be, so the derivative of tangent 2x, so that's going to be secant squared 2x times 2 times x, because we leave this x alone. And then I take the derivative of this x, so that would be 1, and then I leave the tangent of 2x alone. So my derivative in this case is just going to be, let's see, 2x secant squared 2x plus tangent of 2x. And so there you go, that's that's it. So this one's actually a little bit of a, of a clever problem that you really only get by really thinking about these properties pausing for a second, really kind of trying to get your hands dirty with what they mean and kind of going on a little bit of a journey. That, that's really the type of mindset that you want to have with this type of problem instead of just, oh, I just want to get to the answer. Sometimes if you can be patient and explore a little bit, you, you might actually find a, a much deeper kind of connection with everything. Okay, guys, so that's it for, for this one. So hopefully it was helpful. I'll catch you guys next time.